In this lecture, we're going to discuss first order plus dead time models and how to graph them or how to how to fit them graphically, I should say. We're first going to discuss the elements of an FOPDT and what it is, and then we'll discuss how to how to fit them. You'll notice first that I'm using the code hidden option on the right. And I'll make it so we can interact with the uh, the interactive features of this lesson without having to worry about the code and having that obstruct our vision. So what is an FOPDT? An FOPDT is a, an empirical estimation of data or a model of data. It's used to model dynamic processes in a way that we can estimate what's going on from empirical data without actually having first principles or physical knowledge of what's actually is going on. There are three components to an FOPDT. The gain, the time constant, and the dead time. And let's look at how those affect the model. Here, let me just zoom out just a tad. We have the blue line is an FOPDT model, and the red dots are actually their temperature control lab data. So we'll look at how we can fit the, an FOPDT to model the temperature control lab. And so first, let's play with the gain. Here we have a fixed input, and the gain affects how far, how much output per input changes. Let me just say that again. The gain affects how much the degree of output, you can see the magnitude of temperature response per input change. So here we've told it, this is actually from the last activity, that there should be a 70, that the input is 75%. And we play with the gain until we get an output that matches the data. Let's say, let's just leave it right there. The time constant, on the other hand, affects how long it takes to reach that maximum change. So the gain affects how much change. The time constant affects the time to reach that change. And the dead time affects the time between when we make the change, so when we turn on the heater, and when that change actually occurs. So here you can see I'm just playing with the dead time, with the time constant. I'm mostly looking at this forward edge right now, just trying to create something that looks pretty good. That does look pretty good, I have to say. Now we're a little bit high, so we'll just change the gain. You can go ahead and play with this on your own. Uh, in this case, we're, it's not like there's a specific right answer. We're looking at how this changes as we play with these parameters. So you can see this is a little bit low, but especially in this region, before, let's say, 400 seconds, the FOPDT does a very good job at predicting what the temperature response will be given the input. And that's the whole purpose of our FOPDT is so we can make an empirical estimation or make an estimation based on empirical data on what the response will be of a given input. Now we need that in control because let's say we're trying to get to 70 degrees. Our FOPDT will allow us to predict what input will allow us to get to 70 degrees and how long it will take to get there. So we can't predict the future, but we can use the FOPDT to model what the future may look like. Here we have the equation for the NFOPDT. We have tau p is equal to the change in y for change in x, dy dt, dx. And that is equal to negative yt plus kp, which is the gain, times u with t minus the process dead time. So that may not make a ton of sense, but as we go through this, hopefully we can at least we'll learn how to work with that. and then. As we go through the course, we'll become very familiar with this equation. So first, the process gain. As I mentioned before, the process gain is the change in output induced by a change in the input. You can also think of this almost as if it's a slope, with a change in y per change in u. And it affects the magnitude of the response. The process time constant is the time it takes to get there. And as we go through Laplace transform, we can see how we get to this value right here of 63.2%. The process time constant is actually that. It's the time it takes 
for the gain to reach 63.2% of the final change. The way we do that is we take a Laplace transform. You can see here we have a Laplace trans we have our initial function. We take the Laplace transform of both sides. And then we uh, we manipulate this U step change so that we and the zero initial condition we manipulate to zero so that we get everything on the right hand side except for the capital Y S which is the Laplace of the Y. As we take the inverse Laplace of that, we can see that the gain times 1 minus the exponent of 1 minus t over tau p is equal to delta u. And the gain times delta u should equal just delta y. So then, at the time at which t is equal to tau p should be the exponent of 1 minus 1. So that's the derivation. It's a good thing to know because it helps us understand where that 63.2% comes from. Finally, we have the time delay of the, in our dynamic system. And that's the change between the input and the output. We can think of this as that. So let's say we turn on our heater in our temperature control lab. How long it takes for our input saying change the temperature before the heater actually turns on. And here we can see, for example, a process input down at the bottom at time equals one. And we can see that as we change the slider with the dead time, the effective change happens at a different time. On the bottom graph, that's shown by a function which models time minus dead time. So here that change takes place at about three instead of just before one. In the top graph, we can see the red dashed line represents what would happen if that time took place exactly at the change time of one, whereas the blue dotted line shows that change taking place at three instead. You can see they still take about the same slope, they're the same shape, it just changes the time at which that change actually occurs compared to when the input happens. And we can think of valves, we can think of all kinds of things, that really just depends on how long it takes our actuator to actually actuate. So let's discuss how we'll use a graphical method for an FOPDT model using the step test. Here we have a step test, and that's shown, I'm just going to make this KP0 to make things easier. This blue line is what we want to fit our graphical fit to. There's our process data, and we're going to make this orange line match the line by finding the KP, tau P, and theta P. So the first thing to do is to find delta y from our response. It looks like delta y, we're going from zero to three, so our delta y is going to be three. Next, and I'm just gonna zoom out just a tad so that we can see everything in one screen. Next, we're gonna find delta u from our step response. Well, in our step response, we're going from zero to one. So delta u is equal to one. Our gain is delta y over delta u, so three. I'll go ahead and I'll plug that in. Next we find the apparent dead time from our step response. Well our step response, our step response happens right at about one it looks like. And it looks like if we look, draw a line in our process data, we come down right at about, oh, looks like it just after four. So let's, so instead of one, or just before, after one, it looks like it happens just after four. So let's say our dead time is three. So we'll change that tau to a, th sorry, the theta to a three. And it's actually already three. I just had some random numbers I put in. Finally, we want to see how much time it takes for the dead time. So 63% of three is equal to 1.89. So we want to see the time at which it crosses 1.89. Let's call that 5, just after 5. And it starts just after 4. So our tau p is going to be about, let's look at 1. Let's see what our line looks like compared to the 2. So it looks like it's too fast, obviously. Uh, 
So let's, and that's the time starting here that the, the uh, process time starts when the change starts and ends when we reach 63% of that change. So let's say instead two. That's looking better, but it looks like we're coming up just a little bit too fast still. So let's say this is three instead. We're just looking again at that slope change. I actually think that two looked pretty good. Maybe we have more dead time. So there you go. We take this process, we first find the gain, we find the dead time, and then we take the time from the start of the change to when it reaches 63.2% of the way there. And we put those values as kp, tau p, and theta p. You can see if it's not exact, this process data isn't actually an FOPDT. It's actually a 10th order model, so it's going to be different. But we have something that approximates that change both in degree and in time it takes to get there and change from start to input. We'll go on now. We'll go ahead and look at our activities and our temperature control lab activity for this unit, and we'll get more familiarity with this.